one. Bless up. Hey, you were ahead of me. Go ahead. I know. Go ahead. Ah, and oh. here we are God, at another edition of In a Play Thick Wild. And I'll let you do the episode and all that because I don't keep track of that shit. I didn't do it when I was doing the rocket chair. No, so. oh. I thought you wanted to go kaboom or something. Kaboom? Oh. <laughs> anyway, thank there you, you for that. That was just so wonderful. Oh, I had to clear my throat. <laughs> this, no, that didn't sound like your throat. They're a little missy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is, it lifted me clean off the chair. This is oh, Flash, sorry. and my co-hostage tonight is Graham Z. RLM. I've got her hostage. I'll give her back soon. We're negotiating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And see, Graham, look what I can do. Look what I can do. Yeah. And how about levels? Can you hear us okay? Are we like too loud, too not loud? What, what, what? Give me, give me, give me. And uh, I'll just turn both of us up just a smidgen and we can always turn it down if they complain. But, oh, hey, there you go. So I did the grim, look what I can do, look what I can do thing. And now, do you want to say hi to the bots and the, the bodies out there? Bots and bodies. Out there in Real Liberty Media Radio Land. Yeah, where the, it is the place to be. Yeah, where the you deer and give us some static at least. Where the deer and the antelope go to be dinner. Yes, yes. Oh, excuse me. Uh -oh. No, I'm snuck in. I know, that I know. Weird. It's getting late in my day. It's wow. Getting, Old age has never day. never hit anybody that hard this early. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> <laughs> overachieving again. I see how you are. Yes, well, you know, somebody's got to do it. In any case, Dang over it. here in the RLM right. chat, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Ooh, right buddy. up there, right behind him, I should say, is Beetle. Beetle's probably wiping down the counter behind <laughs> Barman. I bet you Barman don't <laughs> very nicely as Beetle likes it. Barman Beetle's has a Beetle's kind of bat. a clean freak. Oh, yeah, I what it up? Felix Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> I also see Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know, and the lovely Moose Goyle. Moose Goyle. Moosey, how you doing, woman? And we got the lovely Miss Kate is also here from the great state of Florida. And we got some Asmodeus Asmo logged into the chat as well. And looky there, Psycholo. Psycholo, I got to chat a little bit with Psycholo before the show. Yay! Yeah, that was, that was fun. Yeah, it was. Well, you know, you just ain't as stoned as the rest of us. That's I'm trying. You, you're <laughs> impeding my progress. Yeah, I'm well, I'm impeding my progress as well. I haven't <laughs> taken a muscle relaxer yet today. I probably should have. Maybe. No, I shouldn't do that. Not till I get off the radio. <laughs> hey, you could always, you could always like chop it up in little like powder and snort it live on the radio. See what happens. No thanks. <laughs> okay. I. You know, there's. Hey, uh, I offered the only my thing advice. Supposed to go up your nose is yeah. your finger. That's uh, that's. Really? <laughs> Wait, is is that my finger up my nose or my finger up yes. somebody else's yes. nose? You can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. At least not in polite or in public. <laughs> Depends on be. how much alcohol you have available. And how good a friend you they could are. Could even be their <laughs> idea when it happens, depending on the number of shots you take. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> okay. Hey, Asmo. <laughs> oh, where we were going with that. I mean, uh, hey, it's me. Yeah. Hi, me. Yeah, it's uh, Yoitoin, uh, PP. Hey. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Boy, you talked to Cirque for five fucking minutes. Huh? <laughs> I know. It's like a. She's tainted you. Through the internet. She damaged uh, my co hostage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm living in a perfect world. <laughs> okay, I'm just joking. Around. She didn't. I'm sure it was Wayne that damaged you. <laughs> no, he's, he's not here right now. Uh oh. Damn it. Uh, he's self, actually waking. Self out there earning, earning his keep, damn it. Mm. Okay, he's earning a paycheck. He's Ow. plowing the field. Ooh. There you go. He's got whatever you want to do. <laughs> I've been accused of doing that, and people wasn't very happy when they said it. Planting some crops, that's what he's they doing. They called it that, too. 
Wow, is there anything you can't identify this here sex stuff by? Help, help. Drop, drop and see. I'm a victim. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. I also see Frumpy and hey, Frumpy Work are both here. I'm here hey, as well, hey, but I'm not going to, you know, swear by my mental me today. <laughs> I also see Jay Thread. Hey, Hansel. Hansel hey, we is have here. The Yes, we have the Hansel. Nice. We have their stuff making you talk. It's always also, that nice to have the Hansel. Yes, it is. <laughs> we got a Meisterbrower in the chat. Hey, as what well are you? Some prints, and I'm reading the screen, and it's in print, and that's a good thing. It's a very good thing. It could be you write in cursive, and not too many people understand it anymore. It's like a foreign oh, yeah, language or something. That. Yeah. yeah. My grandkids can't read it. <laughs> Wow. I wrote I wrote a note to them in cursive and they they were having a hell of a time so I wrote it I printed it out and they're wow. like oh, it looks cool that way there Graham wow. <laughs> so yeah wow I when I was like eight years old that was mandatory to learn how to do cursive in school see and when I was like eight years old you had to learn cursive and if you didn't do it right that hmm. dang maniacal penguin was the ruler with the rub- you know, with the the metal edge would come along. Of course, uh, me yeah. being a southpaw, yeah. they like to use that ruler with the metal edge because that's the devil's hand. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you should know. But in any case, the penguin I've love got, tap on your knuckles. Yes, yes. And they you know, thought they, the they Germans figured that like that because they weren't getting any. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. yeah, that too. I think I they're lying. Oh, hey, Woody. Yeah, there's probably an awful lot going on in the nunnery. In and out, yeah. in and out. <laughs> that too. Uh, Prince is here. Rob White says, <laughs> "Hey, fired up bubbler. The bubbler, the bubbler deed. Oh, bubbler That's deed. right. He roped me in, and I, I was kind of, I'm kind of, sort of bouncing off the ceiling right now, Ooh. Rob. So, Yeehaw. don't take I advantage of Mary bouncing off the ceiling. Yeah. Trust no one is here. And oof, oofta. You know, every time I say oof, I think of, of Veggie Tales and oofta in their silly songs thing. But yeah, my children liked Veggie Tales. And my grandchildren really liked Veggie Tales. But whatever. In any case, I also see the lovely Miss Vanna White, the letter turner of the RLM channel, closely followed by Weather Dork, who is still trying to see up her skirt. But Vanna has a very long skirt today, so he can't do that. Woodman is also here, as well as the Phantom, Chaskura, and Chloe with one E. Hey, Chloe with one E. Singular. We got a we got a cyborgian noodle too, oh. and I'm doing the cyborgian noodle arm thing right oh. now, which is, actually gives me a second wave. Oh. That's kind of cool. Moving along. Mm-hmm. E-Man is oh. here as well as him. Yeah. We got a grommet in the chat. I am Lone Frog has yeah. hopped in. Rabbit. Hey, Froggy, how you rabbit. doing? No, it's Rabbit. Oh, no, that's Toad. Nay Jays. Nay is here. As well as a kiss Mwah. to you. Matt WJ 2002. Got some pop a pop a And a sock puppet. Sock puppet. Sock puppet. Smart ass, Smart in the ass. Chat, as well as the holiest, holiest. Roger. And to round out the crew, the one and only Z Picks. One and only? Uh, <laughs> well, there's only one Z Picks. Now, how come there's two P's? Uh, I didn't say it, that there anything about how his flow was going. <laughs> I just said Z Picks. <laughs> wow. So. But I could have said Z Picks. Porky Pig Picks. I got I, done that. I, I got a dirty word in the title tonight of the show. Mud? Nope. Even worse than mud. And I ent- I entitled the show tonight in a perfect world. The day after the Fed shit in your Cheerios. It did what in my Cheerios? It it shit in your Cheerios. Now, Someone told me that was honey and nuts. Yeah, that's exactly what they did. Now you got a whole world having it. Half of them have to eat their Cheerios with a mask on, so they don't notice mm-hmm. the yeah, they don't notice the smell and the color. 
<laughs> oh, so the mask filters out <laughs> the scent. Okay. I don't know, but somehow or another, they've got people convinced that this mask thing is the thing to do in some places. It's where you are. It's not what's wrong or there's a virus or nothing. It's about what, side, what side of the political thing you're standing on. Do you know, I went to the hospital today to get another set of x-rays, hopefully the last set I have to go for, but in any case, or at least for this shit. Um, And while I was in there, I did not see a single person wearing a mask or exhibiting the social distancing thing until I was over waiting to get my x-rays done. And one person walked by with a mask, and she was walking by in a hurry in scrubs. Yay! Um, now, when I went into the x-ray room, mm. the x-ray tech had a mask on. But yeah. So, yeah. in the whole hospital, the whole time I'm waiting and seeing all these people walking by and in the reception and, mm. and people sitting in there waiting to go visit someone or whatever, yeah. two masks oh. was all I saw. So, what is your determination? From this experience, Miss Mary. Uh, my determination from this experience is out here in the boonies, people ain't freaking out about this crap, and they're only doing what they absolutely have to do in order to retain the funding flow coming into their facility. So, yeah. even I even saw a couple of the administrative staff walking yeah. around, and yeah. they didn't have masks on either. So it's like, ha <laughs> ha, there you go. If you don't have to have the damn thing on to get your federal funding, yeah. you ain't going to have it on. Well, which is worse, a mask or a bra? Is, uh, most of the femme fatales I have ever in known in my life do not like to be raw. They wear them, I, but they don't like them. I haven't worn one since my car accident. <laughs> so you're free balling, huh? Ooh. Pretty much. Well, I have, I have camis that I wear that kind of sort of, but I can't wear the ones with the little shelf bra in or anything. It's too snug and it, it causes Mm. pain in the back area. So I don't wear them. Any excuse not to would be good enough for me if I was trapped in that shit. Well, and yeah, yeah. the farmer is not complaining one damn bit. I hope not. (laughs) Only, I mean, you know, it's like some kind of, it's like an act against nature to complain about seeing nipples. Wake <laughs> up, you idiots! It's like it's like paradise. Anyway, I'm one of the few. Maybe it's my age. I can appreciate nature. <laughs> and some people like their shit, you know, synthetic. Me, not so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm I'm not nah. So nah. I f- I figure that the end of the world it actually came and went, and nobody told us. We just haven't got there yet. But it, it's already done. We're finished. Well, I was going to say, nobody sent me a memo. You know, I, I, can, I can no longer get my, my Chinese shirts. I can no longer get my Portuguese shoes. Oh, I can no longer get my California avocados. I'm, oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm alone in the world in Denmark and... Nobody out there can ever send me anything fun again. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, uh, <laughs> it's horrible. Now I have to live in Denmark and use Danish products. Thank you, oh, yeah. coronavirus. <laughs> yeah. It made your world a whole lot smaller, didn't it? No, actually, I just understand that this is a. Really, an elaborate way to explain the value of the U.S. dollar. <laughs> oh well, that's in the tank. That's oh yeah, but they had to borrow. Oh, they were already working on another stimulus bill to bail out this first. Well, it's a whole lot. What a bunch of idiots! Oh. You know, people just flat ass don't realize when it got to the point where people were bartering for toilet paper. Yeah. That pretty much should have been a really big hello and flashing <laughs> neon lights. Uh, uh. Your money isn't worth as much as toilet paper. Right. And then when the oil, yeah. yeah, when oil dropped below the price of toilet paper, that was fun. Yeah. Well, hell, when went into the negative numbers, it's like, dude. 
But it shows you what a performance all this crap truly is. It's a game rich people play because it doesn't affect prices at all. They tell oh, you it does, God. but my God, these people can lose a million or make a million in 10 minutes and the price of the coffee is still, you know, $12 a pound. <laughs> yeah. You know what's so, really crazy? Well, uh, the farmer's son went to get some hamburger at the grocery store over the weekend because his little guy, you know, he promised him that they were going to barbecue and do some crazy stuff out in the yard. And the grocery store was charging six ninety nine a pound, pound for hamburger. Yeah, pound. I just, yeah, I just went to the meat market, which has always been, always been more expensive than the grocery store because that's you know they deal in fresh cuts and all that fun stuff. Uh. And the price of good hamburger that. I have been purchasing for like the last three months from them yeah. has not changed. It's still, it's yeah, it's still okay. four ninety nine a pound, right. but it's quality hamburger. It's not that hamburger like Ew. some grocery stores where you go and it's all nice and red on the outside, but when you open up the package, it's brown on the inside. No, because that's how they do that shit. Mystery meat. No, they don't do that here. So. Mm. Well, we have some stores around here that if they can't get their hamburger sold on time, then they bring it back and they repackage it and they put fresh hamburger around the older hamburger. Yeah. Well, you know, guns are illegal here because these people still like to just go out and punch somebody in the face for fucking them over. Yep. <laughs> they don't need guns. They just come in, punch you in the head, and get their money back, and you'll never do that to them again. Now, yeah, it's an up close personal kind of thing. Bad joke. What the shit? But, you know, I could always get a good Jewish lawyer. True. I'm leaning to where I found this guy. His name is Murray Shriek. Uh, now, just, just the name. Murray Shriek. I think I might hire him. Handle all my legal problems that I'm planning to have in the future when my cult takes off. Hmm. You don't seem very impressed. <laughs> Not really. Wow. Not really. You know, ten years from now, when my cult exists, you're going to wish that you didn't treat me like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a Donald Trump moment. You'll see. Uh, I'll be the president. You'll see. You'll see, my pretty. <laughs> hey, you know, speaking of presidents, you know what? My prediction for the presidency is my hope, my dream. My it, this would make me the happiest little dork in the whole world. I want for America for Donald Trump to win the popular vote, just like Hill Dog did. But just like Hill Dog, the Electoral College has to vote their conscience and choose Joe Biden because nobody is the face of America right now more than creepy Joe Biden. You deserve. That guy to be the leader of America. Wow, that's a horrible thing to say. Wow. What? Mm. They, why not? What did what what, what did I ever do to, kids to deserve and, creepy Uncle yeah, Joe? Hey, he's experienced. He's been in government for forty five fucking thousand years. Yeah, and he keeps telling everybody <laughs> Donald Trump has <laughs> ruined the economy. <laughs> but you you vote me in there, and I'll fix things. How many years has he been in there? Forty five thousand. He's fixed things all right. He knew George Washington. Ask him. He'll tell you all about it. <laughs> He's probably using George Washington's last set of dentures. Wow. But what just, you know. He feels smart. Come on. He's the result of inbreeding. This is the best they can do. They, they can't do much better than Joe. But he's such a he's such a face of America. You're all divided. Everybody wants something different. Why go with Trump? Go with Joe. Joe is obviously more fucked up to the public than Donald is. He's a better representative for the times. <laughs> Joe would be more entertaining to watch until he has a convulsion and falls there. For the <laughs> but you know, what? he's going to have a black female running mate. I mean, that's oh. pretty much in the works because he's trying to win back the black vote. Mike Tyson. You don't vote for yeah. me, you ain't black. Hey, what about well, that Rodham character? Yeah. That Rodman, Rodman the the basketball player that was married himself. Oh, Rodman? Rodman, that's it. That, hey, Biden, Rodman. <laughs> well, 
Ooh, that would be interesting. Wouldn't it? And they could, but they that, could, that would be no different than choosing Michelle Obama yeah, for his running mate because both of them have the gear shift and ball bearings yet. <sighs> so, you know. No, Rodman had a few fans. That Michelle guy, not so much. Do you know that what? there have not been found any, mm. any pictures anywhere mm. of Michelle when, she, when it was pregnant with either one of those children? Well, There's no pregnancy pictures. Mm. Why is that? Because there's mm. never any physical proof in politics. It's all stories. Well, even Believe. if there is physical proof, somebody photoshopped. It's on the record. That's why they have a record. Fuck the internet. We have a record. Trust that. Huh. You'll we have see. A deal? You'll see. I've got records. When I creepy, got lots of records. When Creepy Joe is running America, you're going to go, wow, how the fuck did he know? It's my, we're not predicting for the future. Ah, there yep. you go. And I don't think he needs a. I I think he, his running mate to guarantee is the the White House. There's one one name that would probably clinch the selection, and that would be Jesus. Well, no, I don't even know if that one would win it anymore these days. You know, made me people laugh. Are kinda, people are kind of. I don't know. I'm looking at people wearing fucking masks, begging to go to work. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with people. Okay? That's my opinion. But a bunch of pussies fucking listening to these idiots with their stories about made-up science and bloated numbers. And look what happened in New York. Look over there in China. But where do you live? Anywhere but the places they're talking about. <laughs> ah. What? Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm beside ah. myself with disappointment in my fellow man for being so easily duped. Ah, please. And yet, when you look back and you start, you know, you start looking back at, at previous generations, and you think, mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. they people's been swallowing this swillage for. Decades, no, they haven't. It, no, when they had. So, no, you know, when you grow up no. in the slop, you really don't know anything different until all of a sudden someone shows you something that's not slop. Nah. And that's where the first thing that they started doing was, you must be afraid of other. Other. That's other. Then that explain Woodstock. Different. See, and Woodstock was. was During cool, a pandemic. And, Ah, uh, but you see, back then it wasn't called a pandemic. Because you just said, that, so I was trying to interrupt you because this is my, where my brain went right to Woodstock. They had one during Woodstock, but nobody talked about it. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't in the plan at the time. This plan that's going on now fits the time we're in. Uh-huh. Mm. Well, yeah. Okay. Song remains the okay. same. So, what is it's it? They've changed the verbiage. Right, exactly. That's what I mean. But they've paid more attention to things as time progressed because they had more crap to fill in the the story with. It's all made up. If you didn't believe it, if you like, I mean, my wife's kind of like on the. I don't know. She says, "Let's see how it plays out," and I keep telling her, "Well, I've seen it so many times. I don't think I need to wait. <laughs> Only this one's going to hurt America worse than it hurts Denmark." Oh, yeah. Because way bigger well, population, and, you know, that's pretty much the size of it. So many people involved there. And then think about the other countries like the U.S., maybe not politically, but population, population ones that have these huge populations. And they got the same exact fucking problems. The U.K., India, I haven't read anything about Pakistan. Hmm. Hmm. What else? We got Russia. I don't read nothing Russia, about Russia, Russia. Don't read much about Russia. And we got a Russian, uh, what do you call it? Steel plant in the backyard. You got a Russia what plant? A Russian steel plant. It's owned oh, by steel yeah, plant. Yeah, I'm got, thinking. I'm thinking growing plants, and it's like a what? Oh yeah, it's a Are backyard. You? No, well, it's back there. You can see it. I mean, but it's uh, it's huge. Puts up a lot of work for the local economy here in this town. So I don't really, um, I've and the Russian people that are hit, live here that speak Russian, they're just like everybody else. There's nothing like scary about them. 
they don't seem to be trying to make us into Russians or none of that shit. Whoever us is. So, you know, a lot of this, what do you call it? Uh, prejudice crap. All these race games that we all play with each other. The Jew, the nigger, the spick, and all this kind of crap. It's, yeah. it's only necessary and important either when you're making jokes and having fun or you're identifying something you really don't know shit about. I, I'm starting to really get, I mean, plus the travel. When you hear people mock other people that they're not even 5,000 miles away from them. You know, like me, I'm 5,000 miles away from America. The thing that I think separates me from other people that would be complaining is the 50 years I spent there. <laughs> I always get discounted that, you know, except by the people I live among here. They're very aware I, I spent 50 years in America. <laughs> ah, well, yeah. you know, because, I mean, Americans do have a, I don't know, our our reputation precedes us, whether we we were involved in it or not. Hmm. You know, it's something to do with this piece of dirt. And so now everybody has preconceived notions, kind of like any other part of the world. Yeah, yeah, like the Danish and the sailing. You know, mm-hmm. the, the Viking life and all that kind of stuff. Well, a lot of that stuff is true. A lot of these people are descended from, you know, those old families. Oh, yeah. So, wow. Uh, yeah. It's a little different. And then in America, you're so mixed. you got people from every place. Well, yeah. America is a country of Heinz 57s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how did it get so, I don't know what's the right word for it, disappointing? Weak and soft. Yeah. Uh, apathy. Is that all that is? Apathy. Well, all right. Then mm-hmm. what little bit of resistance there is seems to just be begging the state to let you do what you've always done. What? <laughs> I could, oh, you know, yeah. I thought rights were something that needed to be stepped on. But shutting, I've never seen any country shut down. Well, I've read about it. Never seen it with my own eyes like this, where they shut and would shut shit down here too. Government said so, and then well, why? And here's the thing that I heard so little of: why? Because there was already that stock answer out there in the front: the oh, coronavirus. And if you had to go beyond that, then there was something wrong with you. Hmm. That's the way I took it all. Don't you know? Don't you understand viruses are dangerous and you can but that fuck you. You've been reading too many stories. And then, you know, then the argument starts. Yeah, well, I yeah. talked with my oldest daughter last night on the phone and, yeah. and uh, asked her if people are maniacal out there with the with the masks and all that other fun stuff and she said, "Oh no, you don't have to wear masks to go shopping or anything like that." Um, they have to wear them at work, but she does work in a meatpacking facility. So, Did she have to wear uh, one before all this corona crap? She said a lot of times you wore one just to cut the <laughs> aroma. Okay, <laughs> that's then the answer would have been yes, right? Uh, it was one of those. It was because she she's not really on the hmm. on the floor or anything. She's up in the the accounting offices, but you know you still got to go right yeah. into those areas because yeah, you got to get numbers and I'm whatever. Yeah. But um, I said, so you guys have to wear them now, and she said, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I went, ah. And she said, you know, we're we're we we are those kind of people. We obey if they tell us that we have to wear a mask if we want to go in somewhere to shop because apparently there was a time frame there where you had to and I said I'd do without hmm. but, yeah you would you're you're a lot different though I think yes I am and yeah. she has three children to feed exactly well which, plus that you, then you get all that stress of daily life yeah. on a worker wow because when I when I was in the employment thing and I had responsibility it was important at those times for me not to lose my whatever employment I had figured out to get. Yeah. But I, I sure... It's, but. Just, it's sad to me that this mm. shit... And then, then you have people that don't have to wear them, that are going around telling everybody else that they're selfish because they're not wearing them. Yeah. And it's like... 
Excuse me? It's not I, always I good like for breathing you. unrestrictedly. I, I enjoy not having a restricted airflow. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can call me selfish if you want to, but I think you're pretty selfish demanding that I kowtow to whatever you say. Well, you're not my boss, uh, Applesauce. Okay, and it's my experience in history with people is they always give you advice that they themselves don't have any experience doing. They just want you to do the thing. But they themselves, me, no, I don't do that. But but you have to. What? <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't follow that, that thought pattern? Or you've never seen it? Uh. Like the politicians in fucking Washington, D.C. that do with they wear masks and gloves and no. Does Trump fuck now? Are you out of your mind? He's not and you know, part of this to me is like, okay, we're going to just go about having our press conferences and nobody's going to wear a mask. And okay, we probably should ought to do the social distancing since we're telling everybody else to social distance. <laughs> and <laughs> nobody went, wait a minute there. So hmm. then they decided to start making people wear masks. But when they were in there... You know, and where only if you know only the reporters had to wear masks because, well, they're sick and diseased, and or at least mentally diseased, perhaps. But they were wearing masks. But then when they wanted to ask a question and nobody could understand them, they pulled the mask down and then they asked a question. And then, like a good little whatever the hell they are, they put the mask back up again. And it's like, hmm. yeah, you get it. And them. people are, you know, people are starting to go. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, yeah. It's it's taken the... It's had to go to such drastic measures. And then people were all in freak-out mode and going, We're under quarantine! We have to wear a mask and gloves! I have, I have no toilet paper! You know, and they're all freaking out about all this shit. Yeah. And then when they finally start slowing down and start realizing, Hey, it'll be okay. I have old magazines. <laughs> I got, I got newspaper. You know, somebody didn't read it here. Read my butt. I'm being smart at Yeah, I you know, know we're but, we're almost. But you know, people realized they were going to survive, and then they started looking around at our fearless leaders that are telling us what to do, and none of them are doing what they're telling us we must do right. in order to survive this yeah. pandemic. Yeah. Right. And so it's finally getting to where people are starting to go. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What are they going to do? Well, they're still in the wait a minute mode. So, and what they're going to do, well, that kind of depends on the energy that's out there. You know, <sighs> I, I don't want to see a violent revolution. And I know there's people out there going, we're going to bring our guns and blah, blah, blah. What the hell is that going to solve? Because mm -hmm. the government's got bigger guns. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. You're not going to solve this fighting them <clears throat> with weapons that they have superior of. You know, it's it's like, don't play their game on their turf. Mm. You cannot fix this situation with the same mindset that created it. So No, I, I know that. I'm aware of that. So that's kind of, you know, we've got to get enough people out there saying, okay, and this that, is bullshit. We all know it's bullshit, so it's, let's it, get our scoop and scoop it up. Come on. We're, it started out at two weeks, and it's coming up to three months. Okay. So oh, no. Some places are talking not until after the elections, and I'm thinking, right, right. oh, really? So yeah, if it's lasted this fucking long, and it's so obviously a hoax, and yet so many people are still, you know, believing the stories that the government tells them, then there, there's no way to fight this. We're we're just gonna have to just wait until they absorb us like a Borg. No, you do not fight a, re a reality that doesn't work for you. You build another one that makes it obsolete. Yeah. And I really think a lot of what's going on right now is that there is so much censorship of those that are going, excuse me, but this is what's really happening. Yeah. All those people are getting shut up on Facebook, getting shut up on Twitter. Hell, what's his face that supposedly owns Facebook? Zuckerberg, Suckyberg, he supposedly made $255 billion or whatever, some astronomical number in two yeah. months' time. And it's like, it's on paper. No, wait, 
This is a digital era. It's yeah. not on paper. Yeah. It's all fucking digits on a screen. But what it's are they? Not real. What are they giving two hundred and fifty billion dollars value to? What is this thing that he owns? That's the valuable? commodity known as Facebook. That in its little privacy shit says it owns you. And anything that you post, which is why when I post something on Facebook, it is something that is to let them know I think they're full of shit. And I love getting those wonderful little, our independent fact checkers have deemed this to be false. Do you wish to proceed and look at the link that was shared? Yeah. Because I want to see what your independent fact checkers think is bullshit. But see, they can't win the argument you know, or the debate, or whatever you want to call it. They can't win it with facts. They can't win it with actual truth. So they sling mud, or they block it. They hmm. remove the ability to be able to see it. And and this, to me, basically means that, oh, yeah, we'll let them play on the Internet. You know, it's no big deal because we own things. And then the Internet got away from them. Sure, they they still run the show, but enough people got out there and all kind of and they lost control of the beast that they created, and people started using the internet to actually educate themselves on the bullshit that's been going on. So, you know, they had all of these little social media sites, so you could get out there and socialize virtually mm-hmm. and send pictures of your meal and all this other fun stuff, and everybody's going. This is so cool. This is so... Wait a minute. They want to have permission to do what? They're telling me in order to access their site, they I must allow them to do what? So, yeah, it's... They're monster... It's like they're, they're trying to shut the barn doors after all the horses have gotten out. You know, it's it's not doing any good. Everybody's already gotten out. So, now they're kicking in with the massive censorship and the fake news and the, all this other fun crap. That's It's all just they're backpedaling, trying to regain control of a narrative. Mm-hmm. There's a lot more people out there that don't believe this bullshit that you will never see on the Internet. Oh, okay. yeah, I know. I live among them. I, yeah. I understand that. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I just... I see this stuff, and sometimes it makes me frustrated. And when it starts making me frustrated, I just am to the point where it's like, okay, go outside and pull some clover for the bunny rabbit or watch the bees because we're getting a lot of honeybees in the yard. And I'm thinking this is good. Get the honeybees used to coming to the yard, and then we're going to put up one of those horizontal beehives. Oh, yeah. And start doing some beekeeping and yeah. Getting our own hunt. Did you tell so. Miss B? I haven't told her yet. She's on RLO still. She's still not very uh, sociable anymore, but she's there. I, she's. Yeah. I think she's a busy lady. Well, still, but. some people get tired of the internet. Yeah. Remember solving her? Yes. I did a radio podcast with him about two or so years ago, something like that, and he said. I'm giving up the internet. I'm going to walk away from it. And he did. Boop. Mm-hmm. Gone in the breeze. Mm-hmm. Which, if I didn't feel I had a use for it, I would probably follow suit. But there's lots of good things for me to do on the internet still. Hmm. Oh, speaking of that, I, I met a, one of the bartenders that serves me. I ran into him socially the other yesterday. And uh, it turned, well, you know how people are when they're working, they're one person. And then when they're not working, they're somebody else. Mm-hmm. Well, he's a Danish guy, and he spent years in Russia. And he, uh-huh. uh, yeah, he was a talented fellow when he was younger, and he, he got an illness and took the gift, his, cre- his creative gift away. He can't work with his hands anymore, like, to do the detail of what he once did. Uh-huh. So he's a little pissed off, and we're sitting there, and we're drinking, and it turns out he's got interest in Tesla coils. <laughs> okay, oh. so when I when I told him, I said, yeah, I'm, I've been doing radio with a, a couple of guys in America, and one of them 
is in a team that has actually made a, a Tesla coil that doesn't get hot. His eyes got big. He goes, what? I said, yeah, yeah I'm work, we're working on this someday going uh, open source on the Internet. And he was familiar with a lot of the electrical terms that I've heard Larry and Rob use, you know, when they're talking about the coils. And then I, I got a chance to repeat some of the things I've picked up from them to tell him, and he was very impressed with what I had to tell. So hmm. it's just amazing it to be yeah. here you know, and get that response. Well, we do live in interesting times, and, and we if we're open to it, you bumped into some of the neatest individuals that you wouldn't think – you could share stuff with, and you just go, Wah! sweet, life is good. Hmm. So, or at least that's the way I see it. Well, it wasn't you know, about I'm, the good or the bad. It was the, the similarities are what I look for, mm-hmm. not, you know, because I'm obviously different from everybody to some level or another, but there's some people that they have the ability to look beyond the package and go, hmm. You know, oh, this poor fuck. And I try to tell people, you know, after two or three beers, I can't remember any Danish I've ever heard. <laughs> you kidding me? It all sounds the same to me. At four beers, I don't, I'm speaking Danish too. <laughs> yeah, just ask you. You'll tell them. Because mm-hmm. you're drunk. What the fuck? Please. Yeah. And, right. So any, you know, any impairment to me is impairment. And because oh, I'm, yeah. I'm small in stature, it doesn't take a lot of impairment to impair me. <laughs> so I just figure, you know, after the fourth beer is, I, I hear what they're saying, but I, blah, 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 blah. It's like that uh, Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, oh yeah, the adults. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've grown accustomed to it to the point where I kind of prefer it. My theory came down to, as I finally decided, if if I was to learn to speak Danish and all that crap, all it would ever accomplish in the bar is I could argue better in the bar about something. Why else would you need Danish? I don't know. See, the, the people that speak English to me, their, their goal is not to disagree and be an asshole. It's to communicate. See, what, what's what's going on with you? This is going on with me. To speak Danish to somebody would mean that there's a problem. See? There would be no other reason for it. Okay, i got to step away just a second. I'm hearing a weird Whoa, noise. Just she's, a okay, she's a hearing the weird noise. But anyway, we got little Miss Mary to come along on in a perfect world on the 26th of May, in case I missed it, because it kind of fucked up the intro. We were playing around uh, 2020 and... I'm out here in Denmark, and Miss Mary's out there in Kansas. The land I'm back. Ad. I was hearing something like either the toilet running or something like that. And the oh, it's not running. Okay. It's ju- it's just sitting there, just minding yeah. its own business yeah. in the bathroom. Still, water and I thought, leaks well, are maybe dangerous. it's maybe it's a refrigerator running, but no, it's just sitting there minding its own business in the kitchen. So uh-huh. apparently, nothing is running in the house. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow, boy. Wah, 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 wah. Well, it was it, a weird noise, though. It really, it sounded like that. You know, if you ha- needed to jiggle the handle on the toilet or something. Yeah. So. Well, okay. this, this is a good time to write some good fear-based taxes, like climate change. The I think what's coming is these, the dipshits from climate change are gonna combine together with the dipshits from coronavirus, and they're gonna meet. And then they're going to explode all over everybody at one time in a great big tax. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, because taxes solve everything. Yeah. Taxes will make the air cleaner. Mm. Taxes will make the water cleaner. Now they've got control of all the businesses that operate from in the free world, whatever the free world is, right? Mm -hmm. So the ones that just got discontinued will be gobbled up by somebody that was waiting for the price to fall. What a coincidence. Just like Silverstein buying the Twin Towers. Wow, what a coincidence to have 
four trillion dollars to invest in small business. <laughs> yeah, ah. and then ah. oh darn! Wow. You know, shortly after making that purchase, I'm going to have to collect some insurance now because look what happened. It, you could say it was an act of God because these people were, you know, because their God told them to. But that's well, and you know, quite frankly, it probably was their God told them to. You know those. Evil, I'm maniacal, so Satan worshiping asshats, <laughs> and I'm not talking about anybody from the Middle East per yeah, se. I'm talking, you know, unless you're you want to talk the Middle East coast, which is Washington D.C. You're a racist. You're a racist, ma'am. I can tell by your tone of voice. It gives you yes, I am. Yes, you are. I am against the rat race. <laughs> you know what I think? I think what? that when push comes to shove, everybody's fucking racist. I think that everybody in their whole in this whole fucking game has all been pushed to the edge at some point. That's why I thought of the dork table. Because we get pushed into saying shit. Pushed into joining sides. You know, fuck. It gets ridiculous after, you know, 40 years. <laughs> so I've been doing this a little longer than 40, though. Yeah. But there's enough uh, variety on the Real Liberty Media chat room as far as personalities that between the group of us, we've all done something. Yeah. We all know a little bit of something. Yep. Okay. Well, the internet has brought us all together and we chitter chatter and don't really do a whole lot, but time's coming. You know, and I heard Grimm say he likes that the RLM is small and it, it's, it is good that it's small because we've gotten tighter together because of it. You know, like Rob and Larry and me, we've got a thing going on with a, or the project, and it's it's different than going in the chat room and playing around with the politics and the money problems and you know oh this new flu vaccine virus crap and all this nonsense. But when you have uh, something where you're making something or you're learning something on the side of the uh, the society thing, it's different. Mm-hmm. Well, I well, I've quit uh, research. You know, fuck, I don't need to research shit anymore. Now I I've done I'm finished with all that. I know if it's true or if it ain't. If it isn't true, if that if I don't know, I'll open the link and look. If I'm familiar with it, I'm familiar with it. I don't need to reread, reread over and over. I've seen it a hundred thousand times, but I forget. You ain't gonna believe this, Mary. Are you sitting down? Yes, I am actually. <sighs> Do you know that sometimes I don't notice that there's other people in the world beside me. I believe that. I see names and I read chat, text and all this other shit and I see pictures and movies and videos. But I'll be sitting here in my living room with my dog. <laughs> and I'll see another person and I go, wow. It, could it all be in my mind? <laughs> it's, it's a Twilight Zone episode. Well, it's Your re- life is a Twilight Zone episode. No, I, but it's it's relative to the input that you been given to interpret what you're seeing, I think. Right? Does that make sense to you simply? Was very mm-hmm. co- okay. Well, you know, because uh, it's like food. You you seem to be uh, familiar with what you grew up with. You like what you grew up with. And then if you travel other places, you, you notice these things forever. They never change. You know, I could I can tell the, uh, food cooked here where I'm living now from. Say Scotland, <laughs> right? Yeah. The, the difference is yeah. okay. Well, it goes way beyond that. After you start sitting down and thinking it all through, you've got the ingredients that went into it, what made it, you know, where the shit was grown. Did it have poison? Didn't it have poison? Da 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 da. Because over my life, I've had all of it. I've had the dirty food and the good food. Yeah. Yeah, well. and you you do you do learn to to notice the difference. I think it's something, and in, in, we're some really incredible beings, human beings. You know, I know we always piss and moan at each other about our little faults and shortcomings and all that crap. But man, when you think about in a course of a day, you, you, like your skin cells are all dying and being reborn and changing and replacing, but you don't see it. You see it. But it's at such a small scale that you you can't visually recognize it. 
but it's still happening, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so instead of like in school, they could have taken time to focus on that thing, that idea. Hey, we're in a big world, but things are smaller, and then they're smaller, and then they're smaller. They didn't do that. What they did was they made it black and white, good and evil, bad and you know, bad people and good people and laws and rules and all this shit that we really never needed. Yeah. It wasted all of our time, so we couldn't acquire the knowledge that we actually needed to understand what what's potassium sulfate, Dad? I don't know. Go ask your mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I lots of questions like that growing up. Go ask your mom. Okay, but I'm still now nowadays. You have the internet right at your fucking fingertips, and we have people in, in 2020 wearing masks and gloves to fight a virus, Mary. In a civilized society where people have fucking jobs, they're responsible for children, but they don't know a fucking hoax when they hear one. And they're raising children and they got jobs. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried. Whoa, what kind of future are we looking at? Yeah, and the overall, 20 years from now. Yeah. It, it doesn't well, look Well, right good. now we're looking at a world that needs to go through a serious detox. Because I really think with all of the vaccine shit, and, mm. you know, I really hadn't stopped to think about it till, <clears throat> excuse me, Farmer and I were talking the other day about, well, yeah, they started doing some of this stuff and it started upticking late 80s and in the early 90s. And he looked at me and he said, you know, that's over 20 years ago. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yeah. 30. Over 20 years ago. The 80s yeah. was 30, dear. Almost 40. Yeah. 80s was, yeah. And it's like, oh, my God. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. And so you think about how many generations have already been inundated with the adjuvants that are in vaccines. You know, those things that are known to destroy, to be neurotoxins and destroy your digestive system. They're in breakfast cereals, so, too. So they break you yeah. in when you're a baby, you know, as soon as they can get it in you. So you start... Absorbing this garbage. Yeah, and the baby formula. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it's it must, like... Yeah, it takes years to, to damage, to do the damage. But once the plant... Well, it's like a plant. Once the seed is planted, as long as that damage is nourished, it'll continue to be more damaging. Just yes. the same principle as growing something, is growing a disaster. And that's how they mm -hmm. conned us all into believing this virus course story. Nah. Yep. Yeah. No way, Jose. But, you know, it's a good story. And I'm sure 2% of the people that get ill from contacting whatever this is, okay, well, whatever. But you can eat a mushroom and die, you know? Yeah. You can come down with some kind of, what, a peanut virus, eat a peanut and die. So, no, this this is different than what, but they're using the principles of what we're, we've been fear-mongered with. All in one story to get us all. Well, it's it's all a diversionary tactic, you know, Working. and it's 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 that whole um, shifting the blame thing and projection thing, you know, because they know they're doing this. Well, you know, it's kind of like with uh, fats and sugars. When when the paper came out that said that sugar was bad and that fats were good, and this was over in the UK. You know, it started really catching traction. And then the sugar people over here in the United States went, no, wait, we can't have this because that will cut into our bottom line. So then they paid someone else to come up with another study that said that fats were really the culprit and that sugar was good for you. You needed sugars. Well, actually, you need both of them in a balance. But you have something that's the truth and they come up and they go, Oh, wait a minute. No, that's cutting into the profit system, which is why I keep calling it all the poison for profit system, because that's all it is. is. If they're not, if yeah. they're not poisoning your body, they're poisoning yeah. your mind. Mm -hmm. And, and the way they do it is they, you know, when they get caught in a lie, then they take that lie and they try and throw it back and, and say all the blame is on the person <laughs> that caught them in the lie. <laughs> Yeah, misdirection. And it's yeah. worked. It has worked for decades, if not centuries. 
Oh, more than I centuries. don't know about for centuries because I don't trust any history anymore. Well, then all you got to do is just figure out if it had been better before, we wouldn't be where we are now. Nothing, yeah. nothing decays to this level of decay and stays intact at the same time without it's being eaten from the inside out where you can't visually see it. And, and then the, the crap these governments tell us is news. And that's a bunch of bullshit. The mm -hmm. shit that's really going on, we don't know fuck anything about it. No. And and the proof is in they they want three more trillion dollars trillion, to invest in small businesses. So these businesses, two three months ago, whatever it was, were already up and running, already operating, already had clientele until the government forced them to stop working. So, yeah, because they weren't deemed essential. Okay, right, all this bullshit. But see, they sold enough people this crap story to support the fucking takeover that they're going to do. Yeah. And, and we're going to be eating fucking Soylent Green and Zombie Brain in 20 years, probably. And that'll be normal. That's, well, that's where they want us to be, yeah. That's where we're headed as a collective. I don't see anything else changing. See, and that's and I what? see all this stuff of cashless society. We're, they're trying to steer us to a cashless society, so? and they're saying that paper money is bad and it spreads germs. And as if we didn't know that thirty freaking years ago. Yeah. So they start. So you launder your money. <laughs> all right, but are are the people in your in your small community are they moving out, going to other places? Uh, not in my small community, okay. no. Mine, Actually, there's people hmm. looking for places to live over here. <laughs> okay, see, so what this pandemic has done is it's pretty much put a boot on the throat of the city. And, yes. All right, now, they've managed to convince people that they needed to shut businesses that were producing food down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this government does anything without a plan. They're inept boobs for the most part, but their inept boob is an act. It's a performance. That's the way it's supposed to look. Oh, look at yes. these people couldn't, they can't tie their shoes with both hands and a friend. Oh, yes, they can. You're just not supposed to know that part of it. <laughs> so they give us Joe Biden and Trump to prove. See? See the idiots that represent you. Look at these fucking senators. They're, half of them got, they got alliance with Israel, for fuck's sake. They're not loyal to you. Don't worry about it. But, hey, this is the best we got. I don't think any of them make it to the position that they're in, at least on the national scene, unless they are somewhat compromised. All comp bitch shit, bought and owned and threatened and whatever it takes to get them to do what they do. Well, I do think that there, you know, occasionally you get one in there that that is not compromised. Mm. Like uh, there was a representative from Wyoming years back mm. that when he, after six months of being in office in D.C., he resigned uh, and he uh, apologized uh, yeah, to the yeah. people of Wyoming. I yeah, I heard something about that. Yeah. And it's, you know, there are some honest people, but once mm. they get in there, they either... Mm. They either get broken yeah. or they get the fuck out. Well, you know, I have known Pelosi and what that she's been in Congress for a number of years. And I've been on the Internet for a long, long time. And I've only seen two links with Pelosi in it. I've managed to avoid her to that level. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one of them was she was dancing with, uh, who was that? That gay congressman that was... Always bitching at women. Okay. Barney Frank. Oh, <laughs> Barney Frank Chaps. is a, a little Barney the Chaps boy. He's yeah. a little toad fag out of the East Coast somewhere. But uh, I seen her dancing with him in a link, and then a couple of weeks ago, I saw the most disgusting example of stupidity from a politician I've ever seen, and that was this Paul Pelosi woman made a video with some suck up she has. You know, that loves her, talking about her ice cream and her fucking $25,000 refrigerators for her ice cream because she's worth $200 something million. So 
This this kind of mind doesn't understand that. Everybody doesn't have that, you dumb fuck. <laughs> they don't have an understanding of money. They don't have a under, they don't give a fuck. They don't even know you're here. Just watch, get them on film and watch them talk about yourself, how wonderful they are, and all the stuff they got. You know, I remember early 80s, you know, mm-hmm. like right after my first little one was born. Yeah. And seeing how uh, there was some news release, like one third of all congressmen and senators had personal checking accounts that were overdrawn. And not just, not overdrawn 20, 100, couple hundred dollars, overdrawn thousands of dollars. Uh. And I remember seeing that news article and talking to people and saying, how in the hell are they ever going to balance? Anything, mm-hmm. if they can't even balance their own freaking checkbook. Because mm-hmm. that's not you know, the nature of the design, is not to be balanced, it's to go into debt, eternal debt. Fractional yeah. reserve banking is a, it's a Jewish trick. It's not well, even... it's like, you know, when Clinton keeps saying that he had a balanced budget. Okay, when was the last time that Congress actually passed a budget? It's I don't know. A, quite I a few. Know. It's been at least a decade. But I remember that bragging, but... Clinton was in the 90s. That's two Yeah, and but a half you know decades. what the balanced budget was? That what it was was it um and this is how they they don't explain it to you. Mm. It is for that year, the budgetary year that they lined out. The money coming or projected to come in was balanced with the money that was projected to go out. That was the balanced budget. That didn't mean that they stayed within the balanced budget, but they passed a balanced budget so that what was projected to come in was the same as what was projected to go out. They didn't have any... Okay, that didn't tell me anything, really. What what began well, with it? What? What? He's saying that... I got a balanced budget. Okay, you had one year where you guys passed a budget where you said you weren't going to spend any more than what you brought in. Big whoop. That does nothing to, nothing to the budget of the government itself. You just wrote a piece of paper that said, well, we're going to spend this much money and, oh, look, we're taking in that same amount of money. So we've got a balanced budget. Ta-ta-ta. And they have milked that. Creative, For years. Yeah, creative financing. That's what I call and, it. And all it was was just on paper, this is how we project to spend the funds. But they're always, always throughout the year tweaking shit and shifting funds. And, and being on city council, I know how that shifting funds works on the small scale. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they would tweak the budget, they'd shift funds, they make amendments, they do this, they do that, and next thing you know, the budget wasn't balanced, and they went over, and they created more of a deficit, but they had a balanced budget that they passed through Congress. They didn't stick to it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, technicality, legal word, yeah. word games. But see, they, yeah. they milk it. It works. And that's how they, yeah, it worked. But unless you actually understand how that process works, no, I don't. you can't call them out on their bullshit. Well, then I can't call them out on their bullshit because I don't know how bullshit. I know they do, but I ain't going to go do it with them. They, they do it in big splats out mm-hmm. in the field usually. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when they're being hauled down the road, they splat out the side and you don't want to be beside uh, the truck when they do that. Oh, country girl. splats on you. Oh. I know. <laughs> starting, you're starting to sound like Vinny. Oops, oops. Vinny no, was. I don't, I don't have the twang as Vinny. No, but he had the poop history. He knew all yes, about cow poop. poop history. He knew about cow poop. You know, cows poop just as much as bulls do. They just don't brag about it. Yeah, they do. Nuh-uh. Oh, Grumner. They ain't out there in the field going, Meh, I just shit. Meh. Okay. Now, Grimner himself has a misconceived notion right there on the main feed of the RealLiberty.com chat. And that theory is pigs are disgusted because they're not. And how would I know that? And I will tell you by saying this. When uh, in the 90s, I was living in Miami. So I'm looking for a room or a cottage or something. And they got all these big properties in this area I was looking at. 
And I found a woman that had a cottage in the back on her property, and she was fine with renting to me. She was worried I wouldn't want to stay there because she had animals. And the three main animals that lived on this property were a 400-pound pig, an Afghan dog, and a goose. And the three of them played together. But the goose and the dog had issues. They were each jealous of uh, the other one spending too much time with the pig. Hmm. Yeah, well, anyway, the pig, Precious the pig, would, uh-huh. in the summertime, I was I was there from like winter and right up until about August, but in the heat of the summer, that pig found this trough and would go get into it and turn the water on to herself. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, I never saw nasty pig tracks, I never saw the animal m- messy or dirty, and it played with an Afghan and a goose, so... If you raise your pigs and swap, they'll they'll do it. But if you don't, mm-hmm. they'll they're adaptable. They're like dogs or cats. You can house break them. You can train them to do shit. They're smart as fuck, and they're yeah. fun. And they're a lot of fun. So you know, if you eat bacon and pork chops and all that, I'd probably stick with being that. I think they're nasty because it would make eating them harder. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can only I mean, imagine. They are very intelligent critters. Ra- raising Hannah for a food source, you know, and I have to eat her. Some- no, that's my dog. Okay, crazy. So you think you can't do that with any other animal? Oh yeah, it's very. We all do. Not all of us, but we could if we tried. Yeah. But you know. I told the farmer I wanted to raise goats, and he said. Mm-hmm. Have you ever eaten goat? And I said, no, and that's not what I'm raising them for. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Uh, and, and now, and now he, he's correcting me because he was talking about the police and I was talking about the pigs. And yeah, I forget I that, Grimner, because I'm so cut and dry. But thanks for clearing me up. But I had a good story out of it because Precious was fresh. Yeah. And huge. But, you know, they're like dogs. They, they like to be uh, tended to. They like to be played with. And they like the company of other animals. They're not like racist to their own species. They mix. It was the weirdest fucking thing to see the dog and the pig play. And the dog and the goose and the pig together was even wilder. I don't know what they were doing. It is, you know, if you if you watch critters, for the most part, and I'm not saying that there aren't critters that, that kind of get a little bit on the rankled side <laughs> and have a bit of a dust up. I yeah. think it, I know it happens because mm. I've seen it happen. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, if if you don't raise your critters to be mean and aggressive, yeah. they're not going to be. And nope. they will be, they will play with, you know, whatever other critter is in the house, basically. Mm. Yeah, well, or you know, in the, the yard. Hannibal and the doctor don't they don't play often, but they do. But mm-hmm. it's not it's not like a daily thing, it's like a mood thing with the two of them. They both got to be in the right like Larry would say, the right wavelength. Or there's no yeah. activity. And then sometimes I've seen one dog the dog lay on one side of the porch in the sun and the cat on the other side and they're just both laid out not not cooperating in anything. Just coexisting. So uh, mm-hmm. they're just as moody as we are, probably. But they they don't have to talk. <laughs> no, no, and they. You, so. And maybe that's that's a better way of they coexist. And what's so wrong with coexisting? But obviously, there's some people that think. I can't coexist when that person is anywhere near me. Or yeah, because when it comes down to competition over it, then you're begging for superiority. I have rights that are superior to his or her rights, and I fuck you. Yeah. <coughs> We're all in this The way this I shit. look at it and the way I've explained it to people is yeah. whatever right you claim to have, yeah. everybody else has got it too. Remember well, that. Maybe, maybe so, but we're all in this shit together. Until things are going good. And when things are going good is when the divide and conquer starts back up. When there's Mm -hmm. drama and trauma and people are suffering somehow or nothing. People want to help them out and do something good. 
But when things are calm and rat relaxed, then mischief comes along to fuck up the balance of the calm. It's very strange how I see this. Uh, you might not see it that way. Well, yeah, complacency leads to that kind of stuff. You know, and when you get comfortable and you don't have anything challenging you, then you become complacent. And then someone will start taking advantage of your complacency. Hmm. And then you become hmm. apathetic when you just kind of go, what the hell? Hmm. And that's that's where I think a lot of people are. Not I don't know that I'd say most, but I'd say a lot of people are at that, well, what can you do? What the hell? I saw something on Twitter earlier today about one person can change and and – some people were saying that, no, and it's like, okay, stop wow, thinking about this. Yeah. You think one person can affect your reality? You think one thing cannot affect your reality? Try going to sleep naked with no sheets, no blanket, no nothing, and a mosquito in the room. <laughs> and tell me, <laughs> one little thing can't affect change. <laughs> well, yes, it can. There's a visual for you guys, RLMers. <laughs> anyway. Well,. Good you know when you when you give people a visual though, then they start going. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, well, that is true. you didn't use the skeeter on your Peter example, so I got to commend you for upgrading well, the quality of delivery. <laughs> I don't have one From of those. So peckers to boobs. Let's go to the boobs. I take boobs for five hundred dollars. No, I do. I do not want a skeeter on my boob. <laughs> Hey, because I'll walk around itching my boob, Ooh, and then the farmer will come up and hey. go, "Can I help?" <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> that's well. I thought he was. And a there fu- went the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> you bragger, you dirty girl. <laughs> Mary's being a dirty girl. I think the pills are kicking in. Uh, so, what'd you decide? <clears throat> I, decide. I know it's after that hour. Bless you. I'm Whoop. I'm still hanging in, here. so yeah. Just we we can keep hack, wheeze, cough, sneeze. Okay, over here on Twitter, I got to tell you, Governor Phil Murphy says wear a mask. That's it. That's the tweet. And right under it, Amy Andering says no. <laughs> I like that. I like short, sweet, to the point. Oh. No. <coughs> yes. Well, I, I, I think I'm insulted by the, uh, the idea of having people wear them under the pretense of, of protection and safety, when it really isn't any of that. It's, it's ID and you, you're being, you're being cataloged and categorized and registered, ruled. You know? For your own good, and you've got, you've been hustled by the system that is really good at lying. <laughs> oh man, nobody lies like America. I mean, well, Israel maybe, but America does all the talking. Are you here? These funny Jewish guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I do Vern. Yeah, I do. Because and, yeah. you know the Jew guy talks a little bit, uh, you know, differently than the American fellow. So there you go. Uh, yeah. But fortunately for me, is I hate all politics. I hate all politicians equally. And, of course, I live with a woman that doesn't hate them all equally because she belongs to one corporation. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, being comfortable around somebody that, you know, on the surface doesn't want to rock that particular part of her life because yeah. they're in a tribe. Well, it's more involved than, oh, I live in California, you know. Oh, it's like uh, there's a handful of countries that are this type, like where if you went to Japan, they know you're not Japanese, right? Uh-huh. Okay, and be, there you go. Well, if you went to New York, people don't know what state you're from. All right, look at that fucking fire. That freak's from Arizona. I can tell by that here, good. What? Well, true, they wouldn't know what state I was from, but they'd know I was a yokel because the way I talk. <laughs> okay. And, and that's fine. And that still depends on the person listening that's familiar with different dialect, too. You know, if you've never been exposed to it, it's just weird. You need experience to identify shit in life and verbs and words and, you know, the spelling. 
This, mm-hmm. this, oh boy, when I think so deeply about my lack of interest. Zurich was trying to show me a little Danish tonight, and I said, you know what? It's been six years, dear. I think it's too late. I don't really care anymore. Because, you know, I don't. But if I did, I have all the tools in my ready. The internet, you know, interpreters, people I trust. I know they wouldn't tell me a word and then tell me a punk thing, so I'd be an idiot when I used it. Unless it was like Pismo. <laughs> well, see, she's just running with Pismo Beach. Thought it was funny. Oh, well, yeah. It I, is a funny word. Not to me. It's funny to you guys. Ah, oh, fucking ah, I guess. I, wow, it's well, like it's like the colored blue. You know, people look at something and they go, wow, that's the most bitching thing I ever saw. And I look at it, and I'm, where, what are you looking at? <laughs> huh? You yeah. don't You don't see that? And No, I, I don't see what they see. I see what I see. So, yeah. Well. Yeah. Same I, thing. Well, then how come everybody's got to be doing and seeing and acting the same, and everything's got to be the same? They lost, they lost the individual in America. In, how many years did it take them total? What, 60? Since about 1960 to now, say, where they've just taken the, the human carbon life based thing and put it in a box and told it what to do 24 hours a day. You'll do this. And you, when you want permission for something, you got a little machine, you're about the size of your palm, you'll push in button numbers and get what you ask for. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, but why do I see that as being a slave? You know, when I have to go on the radio, I have my little things I have to do in order to be allowed to go on the radio. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, we're so conditioned to accept it that I think people just don't even notice. They don't know they're being controlled. They think they're doing what they want to do. I, I believe they think it's their idea somehow for them to do the things that they do. That causes the most damage in the long run. Oh yeah, Christ! Us women have been saying that for ever. Us women, you know, if Wait you a want minute. a man to do something, oh. make him think it's his idea. <laughs> oh well, that's basically, that's basically what's going on. I hate you to break this to, to you. There's guys <laughs> out here that've been saying that about women since I was like ten years old that I remember. So, yeah, it's a double-edged, ooh, look at that, chop, 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 chop. It is a tried and true yeah. method of getting your way. If yeah. you want someone to do something, make them think it's their idea. Well, I and I also like the, the people that try it, that if they don't do it, they go, well, I tried it. And if they do, they go, hey, look, I'm pretty good at this. I can do this. So at least trying shows something. It's the people that, well, I ain't doing that. Well, you know, and there are times where I have I have been that person that said, I'm not doing it, mm-hmm. mainly because I paid attention in class when someone else did it, and I saw how badly it worked out for them. It's like, mm, no. Well, okay, and your mind immediately went to badly, and I'm just thinking about yeah. uh, I was thinking more on uh, people have been doing heavy heavier stuff around the property here the last couple months. Uh, the mom-in-law and the sister-in-law come over last week for lunch. Mm-hmm. And they end up out there in the backyard, build a, a little makeshift woodshed for Cirque's wood to keep it dry so she can have some fires. There you go. Yeah, there you go. But one's a hairdresser and the other one's a nurse. Mm-hmm. So I thought, wait. At least they tried, and they just figured if they did anything that was that bad, I could fix it for them, or me or Dennis or somebody. You know. But the women, uh, they need help. They'll ask for it. But sometimes they just hey, leave us alone. We'll figure this yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think it's an insulting kind of a behavior over here. It's just, to- it's just the way it is. It's tolerable. It's the way things go, so it's kind of what you expect. Well, you know, I I will say that, you know, there's times when I'll say, yeah, I could sure use some help. But for the most part, 
I will at least start out with the whole three-year-old attitude, huh. hands on hips. Huh. I do it myself. <laughs> well, and then I'll get to a point <laughs> where hmm. either I will complete the job or I'll go, okay, hmm. obviously I can't do this by myself. Would you mind? <laughs> but now, okay, now that you've been injured too, that, that changed the whole game for you a little bit. You know? Yeah, I did. So, but you're an honest person, so I don't see you taking advantage of your your illness to get out of things. What I see you doing is taking on more than you could really do before you should do it. <laughs> you overachiever. Yeah. 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 Instead yeah, of cheating, that's... you'll you'll omit. Yeah. No, that's not. It doesn't hurt that bad. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, and and mm. I think that's probably why yeah. the. The specialist said, "You're a tough old broad." <laughs> well, beside that, you know, speaking for mankind, I'm going to do this right now. Women have babies, and I'm telling you, the female uh, ability to withstand physical pain is well beyond what we're, we're what we can do. Okay, a human a ma- human male will his body will shut down in uh, shock, mm-hmm. way before the female does. Women have a threshold for fucking suffering. It's amazing. Don't like to see them do it, but I know they can. Well, and that is all part of the design. Right, but see, the the gender split had taught me uh, men are all badass. and You know, we do this and we do that. When I got older, I found out, yeah, but look what this woman can do. Went, holy fuck. (laughs) I ain't doing, I couldn't do that if I wanted to do that. If it was possible, I still wouldn't want to fucking do that. No, thank you. And here women are lining up to do the very thing I would never fucking do. Yeah. And I've told people about that. It's the way I am on stands on so many different things, but I just won't do it. No, no, no. Not that it's possible to do it, but even to, you know, we're on a radio show. We can talk about ridiculous things because I've, yeah. I've heard Medical science, okay, has claimed that they're trying to work on ways for males to, because, uh, like a, a, what is that, a a seahorse. I could lost it for a moment. But the male seahorse is the one that reproduces. What? Uh, uh Yeah. Things were designed for a certain reason, and we may not actually know or understand or even agree with the reason, but things were designed a certain way for a reason. And instead of trying to fight it, just say, okay, well, that's the way things are supposed to work, then cool beans, you know, and just go with it. Or even, don't even freaking, I think that's that's where a lot of problems stem from, is there's so many people that are overthinking, and, and me, the overthinker, saying this, mm. you know, they overthink some of this shit, and mm. then they then they allow that little butt hurt demon that sits on their shoulder to jump up and go, yeah, that's not right. That's not fair. That's not right. That's uh, not fair. Yeah, oh, yeah, good Lord. Yeah. Really? Seriously? Well, so I saw something years and years and years ago that if, mm-hmm. if everybody were to take their troubles <laughs> and put them all into one basket, mm-hmm. and then you could pull out one out of that basket that you would take home, odds are most people would look through the basket of troubles and they would grab their own troubles and go back home. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, water suits its own level. I mean, there's a million cliches that we could repeat, you know, to make the point, I suppose. But Yeah. Wow, it's just weird how in, in the end it works out just the way they told you it would. You uh-huh. know, it's like the conspiracy theory shit, right? I can still re- I still have vivid memory of people I talked to about these kind of things in the eighties, <laughs> and I remember oh, yeah. thinking, "Wow, you guys are out of your fucking mind! What am I listening to this shit for?" But here I am. So well, they planted that seed. It didn't take all that long. I wasn't going to go anywhere in finance. I didn't have the. Uh, I didn't have that lack of conscience that you need. You need to be able to hurt people financially to make money off them. <laughs> I, always, yeah, I might as well just be a bank robber or something. This is not, not for me. Yeah. 
And just so it taught me the lesson, though, in life that just because I'm good at something doesn't mean that, that I want to do that. So lots of things I'm good at doing that I don't like to do, them, but I'll do them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I understand that. Okay. Well, not everything, not every minute of my day is that. Just there's some things in life that, no, nah, like gardening, you know, running a lawnmower, mindless drone machine stuff. I don't mind it so much. It does. It's not like, oh, look at the time it's taken off my life to do this crap. It it's more you know Cirque likes to likes to see the finished product, and I'm just more uh, what do you call it? I'm quicker and I'm just more meticulous to the detail that she's looking for. She's not a gardener. You know, she doesn't really have that ability to. Yeah, well, some people they over they either overestimate or underestimate skill. You know, and cutting things to certain heights and shapes and using machines to do it isn't as easy as some guys make it look. Yes. Yes. I have watched people that, you know, are... Because I've tried to trim hedges, and it's like, no. <laughs> yeah, I I'll know. I'll pay somebody. See? <laughs> I'll pay somebody. Exactly. And especially yeah. when you know the person that is going to be trimming and and you've seen... How they work, and it's like, sure. it's worth it. Uh, it's worth it. I can sit here reasons. and watch them do this and be entertained and then be be happy with the result and not have to actually do what I don't like doing anyway. <laughs> mm. Right. But, you know, and it's like what, it's like uh, cooking or some mundane little task, cleaning mm-hmm. up after, after a meal. You know, no, there's not a lot of people that enjoy doing the act. But it's funny how we've been, uh, I don't know, tolerant of it. It's it's more comfortable to be in a neat than it is squalor. It's more healthy. You know, you're not going to... So, the, the, uh, the maintenance thing, you know, even though it's a drag, yeah. and, but I don't, I don't give it a lot of thought when it's happening. I give it more thought when I'm not, when I'm not slaving to something is when it pisses me off, not not when the act is really happening. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Cirque wanted the, the walls, you know, took down out in the backyard. And we had everybody participate in that some level. It wasn't me doing anything by myself at all. It was just amazing. But the best part was when uh, Bjork, the little five, five foot tall, good Lord, she's smaller than me. When I threw that, it must be a 16 pound sledge, maybe more, might be heavier. But I took it and I threw the head so it would fall short and the hand would fall like it was going to hit her. And she didn't even budge. just sat there. And then she got the fuck up off her chair and she picked that sledge up like she knew what she was doing. And she walked over and she took a couple of good shots at the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm telling you, there's nothing so interesting as to see young people destroying a brick wall. It was... Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, she's she's Ollie's girlfriend, and been, they've been regular here for months now. So, well, you know, there is something very cathartic about tearing shit up. Apparently, yeah. Uh, I'm just, but what what I was I was just thinking about, you know, here's a little girl that has to prove herself to the world, and she was just as capable of that sledge as I was. Because I use balance yeah. and weight, you know, the weight of the tool to looks like I'm swinging so nice swinging anything. I'm using balance and gravity. Yeah. Well, the little girl, she just outsmarted everything and took the head of the thing and used it from the top down, <laughs> or swung it underneath and the bottom up and got the job she was trying to do done. So wow, and it, you'd think city kids would uh. They wouldn't be so comfortable doing it. They seemed like they knew to stay out of the way of the debris. Nobody got hurt. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you're young and reckless, these were young but not reckless, but they're smashing a the fucking wall to bits. <laughs> That's just too much. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe everybody should just pick a wall tomorrow, take a nice heavy something, and just go pound on it for a couple of minutes. See if it doesn't make you feel better. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we mm. used to um, roof houses. Mm. 
just to make a little extra money mm. on the side and and uh, the tearing off part, mm -hmm. getting up on the roof and tearing all the shingles off and throwing them down on the ground and whatever. Man, I couldn't get enough of that. I'd get up there and I'd be tearing up <laughs> and I'd have every nail was pulled, every staple was pulled, you know. I had a good time with the tearing off. When it came to actually replacing the uh, tar paper and the shingles or uh -huh. what have you, yeah. nope. I didn't want nothing to do with that. I will tear shit up <laughs> all day long. Okay. But when it comes to fixing it, mm, you know, now walls I could fix. You know, I can sheet rock it and all that fun Ooh. stuff. But, but it's it was just kind of funny because my grandpa used to just laugh at me and he he'd just say, you tear those things up like nothing else, but when it comes to putting on the shingles, which is supposedly the easiest part of the job, yeah. you don't want nothing to do with it. No, leave me down on the ground. I'll go along and make sure we got all the nails picked up, all that other fun stuff. I don't want up there putting the shingles on. I want to tear that shit up. <laughs> you're, just, you're just a violent granny. Well, it's it really is. It's a stress reliever. Yeah, there's reasons you know. for reasons. Like you said, and mm -hmm. and yeah, there is. There's got to be something to that. I wonder if there's books and paper. I've never really pursued any written shit on it. I'm just going off my impulse. Because when I've destroyed shit for money, it was like some of the best work I ever got. <laughs> you know, if you're going to call it work, and I get to fuck all this up, wow, cool. Yeah. Call me a slave, yeah. baby. I work here, and uh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's it's a weird thing to share with somebody. <laughs> Just say it, because uh, like you were saying about you didn't want any part of uh, doing the shingling. There's lots lots of roofers that are the opposite. They the pain in the ass to them is the tear off, and having they're worrying about where all the fucking nails are, all that detaily shit pisses them off. They want to put down a new roof, so it's backwards. You got you know the opposite of what's common. Yeah, well, you know, there's people makes like you, doing yeah. different jobs, and that's it that's a good thing. Makes you valuable in the workforce when you are a specialty. I was a specialty because of my size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could get into places that Steve couldn't get into since he was like nine years old. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that's that's the way the farmer is. He's the tiny one on See? the crew. There you go. He can get into places where you, you know, very, very snug and then try and figure out how in the hell to get back out of them. Mm -hmm. But he can get into pieces of equipment to, to work on those things that are up in those awkward spots where nobody else that works there can do that. And, that's and he something. enjoys that. See? I... Reasons for reasons, Miss Mary. And, yep. and some shit that happens in your life, you know, you don't find out what the fuck happened or why it happened for 20 years. And then there's other things that you see them come. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Does that fall under reasons for reasons? Yeah, I think it does. Okay. Yeah, it does. We'll, we'll allow that. We don't need a ruling from the judge? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. I just thought oh I'd offer Oh my goodness, you that. there's coronavirus tracking bracelets now. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Well, it's going to it's going to sell. They're going to sell. But uh, it's going to be like mood rings and pretty soon everybody's going to want one. Oh, but it's like a mood ring. Yeah, see the if the Yeah. The delivery of the technology that they want to control you with is innocent and playful. It'll be accepted better, you know. It, I forget who it was that was right and I think it was Hansel they're not going to shoot anyone to make them have a vaccine. They're going to starve you into a vaccine. If you don't join, oh, yeah. if you don't join this and get your certificate, you can't buy food. What? <laughs> Welcome to America, land of the home and the free. Let me see well, your card, please. I can see that working really well in cities. Out here in the boonies, yeah. that wouldn't yeah. work because right. people would just – and I actually had someone send me something this morning about um, local farmer's market where you can – every Saturday, 
farmers show up, ranchers, you know, if they've got pigs, if they've got cows, if they've got wheat or whatever, and you just deal directly with the farmer or the rancher. Yeah. They're cutting out the middleman. Hmm. And I don't have a problem with that. Uh-oh. Really? But management, what would we do without middle management, Mary? <sighs> Oh, we have an awful we, lot more time to ourselves. And we'd be able to <laughs> afford to eat. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I don't know. I think that, that what's going on right now, I, I was joking with everybody years ago about Palestine was practice for what's coming. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not laughing about it anymore because I saw it happen. Yeah. Well, it's it's like <coughs> that poem that <coughs> excuse Ooh. me, I swallowed wrong. All right. That I've poem done that. that they did a YouTube video, <coughs> excuse me, oh. about where first they came for. Yeah, yeah. And you know, a lot of people they'll oh oh yeah, that was back in Holocaust. No, that is a daily occurrence until you stop it. Mm. First they came for, mm. and you will be next. Well, so, then where, okay, where does, I've still yet, all these years, where does the support for this government crap, where are the people that support it? You know, we, there's a lot less people that support it on the RLM chat room than do. Okay? Yeah. And the, the ones that do, pretty, they get treated pretty roughly because, well, you're in a liberty room where people mock government and its agents and supporters. So if you don't know that coming in, well, then I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, because uh, thinking outside of the box entails risk. You can't, you can't really believe it until you do it and doing it. Sometimes, like Miss Mary will learn, you you may never uh, renew your driver's license again after this shit's all over. We'll see. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. Today I was able to drive myself into town and, yeah. and drive around and tend to all of my. So it was nice to not have to rely on someone else to uh, take me to run my errands. Yeah. So. Have you ever thought maybe that the person that's doing that really likes to do it with you? Yeah. So the only one feeling guilty about whatever it is is just you. Well, that's okay. Because yeah. you're so fucking independent and all that crap. <laughs> well, I hear that a lot. <laughs> all right. Well, I've I've been married to Cirque for a few years now, and I'm still to this day, I am not familiar enough to remember. Hey, I got I got to go get this milk home by a certain time. You know, I had to go do. I, I'm still not a slave to the clock, even for my wife. Well, yeah. I just some part of my personal mind or being or whatever the fuck it is in there, it just doesn't recognize the clock. And I try to be, you know, Mr. Clock all the time. <laughs> I do the radio on time every freaking show. I'm never really, really late. Sometimes it's technical problems. But I'm, if I had done things right, I'd have started the show on time. But that's how I uh, how I am in real life is usually late. Didn't notice what time it was. Oh, fuck. I'm supposed to be there. Whoa. Yeah. Well, I, I never changed. I never grew out of it. I understand that. But here in my prison, where I've got my computer, you know, my chains, and uh, all my gadgets and gizmos to play with, well, I can be on time for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I, I still, for some reason, have two or three beers. Uh, Cirque wants their milk. Yeah, well, I'll get to it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so, you know. Uh -oh. well, well, yeah, you don't want to go for milk and then come home with cottage cheese. Right. Well, no, I, I do the shopping last. But I put that off longer than I should have. But I, ah. well, I know it. I'm, so I'm not denying I'm cool. I'm just saying that. In my mind, it's really just the fucking clock I despise. I'm not taking anything out on you. It's that damn clock. Oh, I know. 
and it's going to win anyway someday, you know, but we only got so many days or so many years or whatever we got and it's supposed to be more comfortable. So, you know, but I've still yet to put that together when it's happening. Well, there's something about being a slave to an inanimate object. <laughs> Excuse me. I wonder how, yeah, how deep rooted is it in you? Um, I real I I hate appointments. I absolutely hate appointments, and I am not real good at you know all these people would say it's so disrespectful if you aren't somewhere on time. Well. When I get there on time and I have to wait 15 or 20 minutes, I think that's disrespectful. Yeah, but so, they don't. you know, yeah. if you're going to make an appointment with someone, yeah. then by God, be it's there for that appointment. Yeah. And if you're not going to, then go ahead and tell me so that I can yeah. adjust accordingly for myself. And not so, dot your eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep my yeah. cool so you don't have a black eye for being an idiot. Yeah. You know what? That's when people are being idiots, you know what they don't know, Miss Mary? What? That at that time that they're being an idiot. Most of them have no clue. When I'm being an idiot and at that moment that I'm being an idiot about something, I don't think I'm aware of it at the time it happens. It's it's something for me that requires hindsight, an error, you know, a mistake. Go, oh, one of those. Fuck, I'll look at that later. <laughs> Ah, well, see, there are times when I am intentionally being an idiot, and then that's only about 10% of them. And then the rest of them, it's like, that really looked a lot better inside my head. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way it worked out. Uh, welcome to life. I think it's, I think we're all like that. For, there's, see, there's the narcissist and the egomaniac, you know, the few that stand out in the crowd. Some people call me that shit, right? I think I'm just a mm-hmm. hedonist. I, I don't, I don't think of myself as special. I just think of myself as equal. And if you can do it, so can I. And the limitations are physical. So the things that I can't do, I accept them. So, okay, can't do that, no problem. And the things that I excel at, I try to put my attention on those things. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I feel comfortable with now is communicating my opinions about what's coming to the world in the physical realm, you know, through politics and finance and all that good shit we're all bamboozled by. Movies. People, I don't think they're as aware of how much of a play the film industry has in creating your your perception of how the shit works that you don't understand. Like NASA and spies, FBI, CIA, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you see all these movies about court. Oh, this girl in a skirt slid up to her ass, sits on the table and gives the judge a good shaking. And no, that's not what happens in court, you fucking idiots. Are you nuts? Boy, they'd send her home and make her go put clothes on. Mm-hmm. But see... We've been, uh, what do you call it, TV'd, I guess. Yes. Conditioned to see these these performances. You know, this is an adaptation of a real event. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Whatever it is, probably happened somewhere. There's eight billion of us. I'm sure it happened somewhere. Whatever it is. You know, even the weird sicko shit. But then they take it too far with world pandemics and uh, I don't know. They wouldn't have been able to sell 9-11 without movies. Yeah. I don't yeah. think so. I don't... Because when I saw it, if I hadn't seen it on television and didn't have the friends I had to, that knew about airplanes at the time, I might have fell, fallen for the airplane thing. But that's not what it was. The history proves that. But... The television people were so in, uh, into the game that they had film already ready of these planes went flying into these buildings. <laughs> oh, Crime Any Christmas. Yeah, that one clip from the BBC where they'd announced Building 7 collapsed 20 minutes before it collapsed. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. All the world's a stage, and we are all merely players. Life but, goes on. And still, no matter what they do to us, life goes on. You know, they're just calling the herd. The strong are going to survive. Whatever strong means in life. I'm not even sure. But I'm just saying, you know, from a, a layman's perspective, the the guy that's not afraid and the gal that's not afraid, they're going to probably be here. And the ones that are, you know, cowering in a corner and worried about dying, they're going to die because that's what you're bringing on on yourself when you do those things. But we're not taught that. <laughs> so, eh, it's a bunch of crap. Don't listen to that. Yeah. Well, I still believe they're calling the herd. And, and as much a, a, of a hoax as I truly believe this to be, it doesn't mean that some of the components of it aren't true. But... There's no bat fucking soup from Wuhan and bullshit like that. There's a bat, there's a there's a virus, but whatever this virus thing is, that they explained it this huge horrible thing and it's just a sneeze. You got you know, you got fleas. Yeah. What, who was Well, you know what from all of the symptoms that they're talking about, mm-hmm. that shit went through out here in November and December. Yeah. Well, didn't the CDC stop recording uh, influenza cases for a period of time? They suspended recording influenza. <laughs> what? I I think the CDC has suspended an awful lot of things, especially any semblance to reality. Then why do people still, to this day, listen to these performers? You know, they're actors. Be- because they really, the conditioning is strong. Mm. These people are experts. Yeah. They have a piece of paper hanging on the wall that's in a fancy frame. Yeah. Have you ever seen video of that Bill Gates and Melinda Gates couple? I've yeah. You know, I I, I wouldn't want to sit down at a table with them in a restaurant. No. Okay. Ooh, they are creepy looking to me too. I thought it was just me. Oh, I got somebody on my side. Actually, side. if you oh. watch Bill Gates, yeah. A lot of the videos he's in, and really pay attention to the body language and oh, mannerisms. Yeah. yeah, he really, really reminds me a lot of Stephen Hawking. Uh, and I, I have said forever, yeah. Stephen Hawking was not that smart. Yeah. I mean, seriously, you stop and you think about the, the technology that they supposedly used so that this genius could communicate with the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was that smart. I think there Mm -hmm. were other people (laughs) that were doing... I really don't think he was that smart. And I've seen some stuff and and looked at the photographs, and, you know, they say the human ear is supposed to be a better identifier than fingerprints or... Mm -hmm. And... Yeah. I don't Some doubt of the it. the stuff I've seen, I don't think the Stephen Hawking that died a couple of years ago was the real Stephen Hawking. Hmm. I think it was another lookalike. Just See? like I don't think Hillary is still alive. I think she died before or Trumples got selected. Wow, there's a lot but, of missing. Who's that? Be, uh, the Supreme Court Justice. Ginsburg. Oh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Yeah, Ginsburg's oh. out, of, out of the game somewhere, too. Yeah, that's mummified. So the things that are going on to call the herd on the surface, I wonder if they're more disgusting than the shit they're doing behind everybody's back right now. Well, the, I, the states are split. It was 46 um, against the um, masks and gloves and the lockdown and 44 for it, right? It's either the Republicans or I might have had it back. It might be the <clears throat> the other way around, but it's forty six, forty four. So it's got an odd, an odd that's ending. That's a lot of that's a lot of states, but <clears throat> there's really not. Well, that wait a minute. Many that are uh, trying percent, to do the total wait, lockdown. I said per, I meant percent. I'm sorry. Forty six oh, percent. Forty. Yeah. So it was like that. Was, and I thought, wow, isn't that isn't that just odd? How even that, that couldn't be any better than that. To make it look like there's a difference when, you know, half people are crazy about this color and the other half are crazy about that color. Yeah, and how 
just exactly how did they decide what color was what color and boo. I I don't trust any of that shit anymore. It's but, like right. I want to know how in the hell you came up with those numbers. Right. Did you just pull them out of your ass or did you actually talk to people? Well, I I believe that 46% of the states have it one way and 44% have it another. Where we I got lost in that one. Because I, I meant 100% and I said states. Oh. So it's, oh, see, it's a yeah. percentage. As a percentage, it's so close to... Hey, hey, hey. It's so Heart's close excited. to... Yeah, somebody outside. But it's so close to 50% that it's kind of scary. Yeah. And, it, and, it, yeah. and they've turned it into, whether this is true or real or not, this is what we're reading on the fucking internet. And it's telling you that. If you wear the mask, you're part of this club. Republican, and if you don't, I guess I got it backwards. If you don't wear it, you're Republican, and if you do wear it, you're a Democrat. So they're making a political thing out of a physical thing. That's not even true from the start. Yeah, it's well, anything to make it a political so that they can get people to start fighting over nonsense. Um, yeah, 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 because it. Viruses are not political entities. They are little bitty, little, 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 little bitty things that actually make up a good share, like 47% of your body. Give or take. Yeah. So they're, uh, but they're going to make it a political issue. They already you know, did. That's I, my point. It's 46% yeah. of the people that they're not wearing masks are part of this party of politics and the group that's supporting the mass are representing this party of politics how the fuck did that happen oh it's 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 another distractionary thing and i'm sorry i'm watching the rlm chat and barman had said something about 5g or posted about 5g radiation and towers and stuff and i did read something about that and they said it's not and this person what I was reading, and I can't, it's been a couple of weeks ago. My weeks are blurring. But um, they had said that it's not that activists are burning down the towers. It's just that they're getting switched on and they're overloading and they're frying themselves. Wow. So, which would not surprise me one damn bit because, you know, everything is done to the lowest bidder to, you know, to start with. It's like, why would you go up in a NASA capsule? <laughs> because that thing was put together by the lowest bidder. Every single component was the lowest bidder. Yeah. Granted, they probably were highly inflated prices, and then they did a little back scratching to decide who got the lowest bid. But, yeah, no. I don't trust a lot of that technology, and I really do think 5G towers are what's really causing this stuff. Hmm. Um you know, it's the change in the frequency of the world and which is affecting our internal mechanisms and it's affecting everything else outside of it. So, yeah, and I think Larry, it was Larry that says the, uh, the people that had a flu shot like me, mm-hmm. that that flu shot was to make me uh, receptive to the wavelength. Uh-huh. Now, that would have probably worked if I didn't take all the remedy that I take. As far as uh, zinc, let's see, I got a little bit of kalium, which is uh, potassium sulfate, for all you nerds out there, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, vitamin C. There you go. So, because I had a problem with my ear since before the, I'm just lazy, you know, and it was, I'm I'm just not like, oh, I'm sick, blah, blah, blah. I just had to take some medicine and fix this ear problem I had. And it's starting to clear my throat, my voice, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, all these things that were bad for me, <laughs> you know, the lockdown and the corona, just simplified life as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. But that's because the people I live amongst know better. As a collective, they know there's no freaking corona. Okay, that's the common the common person out there is like no mask, no gloves. They're walking around, they're holding hands, they're slobbering all over each other, they're sitting together in big groups, and give a fuck. But that's because the state backed off. 
But these people aren't the kind like yo-yos. They're going to change your fucking mind in two months and, well, we were wrong again. Uh, no, you aren't. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you had your chance to be wrong. Now let's get somebody else fucking in there to, to do this job right because you fucked it up. And that's what I, that's what I see in the, uh, my daily life when I participate in local society. Not, not a bunch of people that are going to cower and, oh, you know, we're going to all die. No, they had their chance and they lost it. Came and went. Mm -hmm. Well, it's continuing in some places. That's very upsetting, you know. And then they're playing all these money games with everybody. You can't work, and the government's going to give you money, but they're not going to tell you when. They're not going to tell you how much and what the strings are attached to taking the money. But if you don't take the money, you'll starve to death. I mean, it's fucked up what's going on. Really bad. I call it calling the herd. Yes. You know? And maybe I insinuate that the weak, but, you know, calling is a calling. They'll take, if you're, you know, just don't pay attention, blank. They'll find you. Mm-hmm. They're, if they're, these people are ruthless. If this, what the outcome of this last three months is beyond even my, my sick mind. I couldn't have wrote a story like this if I'd have tried to. But now that it's over, now I'm trying to. <laughs> I call it bad germs, Miss Mary. Yeah. And thanks for coming along this week and doing the uh, In a Perfect World podcast with me, with your illness and such, tiredness, and your obvious drug addiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so obvious. I I haven't taken any muscle relaxers for like almost a week, but yeah, today it's kicking in for some reason. I don't know why. Well, but, you've got two choices. You know what they are. I don't give either. I don't give uh, medical advice to people on the radio. I just tell you what no. I do. I don't tell I can you either what to take do. one or I cannot. Da- or I could just do my oils and just go lay down. Wow, you can <laughs> read my mind and shit. It's like you're right inside my head like Hannibal Lecter. I know, it's scary. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you got anything that you're looking forward to that's good or do you got any bitching to do about what's bad cuz we're at the end. Got a few minutes left. Uh, no, not really. Oh. I think I'm pretty well. I'm done. Oh, uh, uh, she's done. Well, out. Walt Pareto posted over on Facebook, will you take the vaccine? Will you reject the vaccine? Are you undecided? And Walt's a very sharp, very sharp guy. Like, I would like to see him and Larry Woods talk because that, be that would be an interesting conversation to watch. Hmm. Because Walt is very smart in some aspects, and Larry is very smart in other aspects. So to see these two different aspects mm-hmm. try and converse, it would be an interesting conversation. I think. Oh, you're talking about one you'd like to see, not one that's coming. No, one I'd like to see. Ah, I don't know mm-hmm. if it'll ever happen, but ah. it would be cool you know, if Walt and Larry mm-hmm. were to ever interact. But Walt is East Coast, and Larry's middle of the country, so... Yeah. Don't know that that will ever be a physical thing, but it would be interesting to watch. Well, do you have that. do you have any plans for Saturday that would interrupt me kidnapping you? Uh, actually, I think Saturday would probably be probably be good. Right. Um, Sounds like a plan. Because I think the farmers probably going to be farming, and uh, well, I don't plan on overachieving a whole hell of a lot. We can talk about him behind his back for two hours. Yes, we, yes, we right. could. Tell everybody yes. what a horrible guy he is out there working while you're sitting there in the radio talking to me. Bad man, you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Wayne, how all. the fuck are you? Hey, no, I, <laughs> he knows He knows my six sense of humor. After all yes. these years, huh? Anyway, I've got really not much except to say uh Thanks to you guys in the real liberty media that do all the stuff that you do so that we can do the stuff that we do and, you know, the world can go on. And maybe we'll learn a thing or two, make it more comfortable. Yes. That would be nice. You know, I don't know what to do to help any, anybody but myself. So that's the problem with, with this life. So, uh, so individual. And, it, and no, nobody really puts any attention on that in the right light. 
You know, you're an individual two point. <laughs> well, you know, there's yeah. nothing wrong with being individuals. And I think that's what makes the world go round. You know, as we are all little individuals and we all put together, make this wonderful mosaic. But none of us, hmm. none of us can see the full picture. So uh, I mean, not- neither. I'm a blind. I see nothing. I know nothing. I see nothing. I'd be like that I short guy. I know nothing. Exactly. Yeah, like that. <laughs> only, only go. smaller. Ah, okay. There you go. Anyway. Well, see I will ya. let you go. Hasta la taco, buchichos. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm going to go have a nap. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Night.